So welcome to part four, where I'm going to show you how to analyse your landmark coordinates that you produced. I'm going to show you how to import the data, how to do a Procrustes superimposition, which um, I explained in the introduction, how to remove data outliers and exclude observations, um, a covariance matrix, um, how to do a principal components analysis to um, show the major shape variation, how to represent the mean shape and shape variation in wireframes, transformation grids, and lollipop diagrams, um, and how to do a canonical variate analysis or a discriminant analysis, which is a method used to sh find um, shape features which maximize the separation between groups, and also to see how distinct the groups really are. Open up MorphoJ. So then we're going to go File, Create New Data Set. Make sure that when you import your data, you pick TPS, because if you have text, you'll come up with an error message. Then find your data. So then you'll have your TPS file that you created in TPS uh, dish. So create data set. And then you've got your new data there. So now you're going to do the Procrustes superimposition. So preliminaries, new Procrustes fit, keep it on a line by principal axis, and then perform Procrustes fit. So the large dots represent your mean landmark positions, and then the small dots represent your Procrustes residuals. So you can now check if there's any data outliers. So click um, preliminaries and then find outliers. So the blue dots here show um, the average shape. And then if you click on any of the cases, the red represents how far they deviate from this average. And if you have one that's particularly deviated, then you can remove it using this. So they all seem pretty similar, so I'm going to keep them the same. You could also exclude observations. So what I will do here is um, go on preliminaries, include or exclude observations, and then you can select ones you want to exclude. So you want to exclude all the females, all the males, or all the specific um, species or something like that. So before we do the principal component analysis, we need to do a, a generate a covariance matrix just using this. Select the Procrustes coordinates and execute. And now we will be able to do the principal component analysis. But before we do that, it's good to create a wireframe, which is a way of visualizing the results. You don't need to do this, but it will be a nice way of presenting your data. So all you have to do is link the landmarks and it will create a link between them. And generally, you'll do this along biological features, but it's entirely up to you on which ones you think will look the best. So that's my wireframe template done. It can be quite a laborious task, but once you've done it, you only need to do it once. You can see I've represented the overall body shape. Uh, I've got the pectoral fin origin there, the operculum, and the eye, which I think is a good way of visualizing it all. So you just click accept, and that is now saved. So something else that's quite useful to do um, and will be helpful later is to add classifiers. So if you have quite a small data set, like anything under like 100, you could just edit them and just add them yourself. So add classifier, and then say species, um, sex, um, things like that. 
but if you have a large one then this will be quite tiresome so the best thing to do is create your own classifier file so i did that which is here and you can see i've just done species location and region and then you just do that in excel make sure the id is the same as the ones that you've used in um during your landmarking and you do file save as and then comma delimited file and then you'll end up with that one there and then what you can do is file import classifier variables and then find that classifier file open and then if I go on here and I edit classifiers, you can see that it's now filled them all in. So I don't need to do that manually, which is great. So to go back to our process coordinates, we did the covariance matrix and that enables us to now do a principal components analysis. And that will produce um, a few different uh, graphics. So we've got the lollipop diagram here. We've got the eigenvalues, which show us which principal component is responsible for most of the variance in um, body shape. And you can see that the first one is substantially uh, more important than the others. And then you can see the principal components plotted on a graph, the first and the second. So on this first one here, the lollipop graph, you can change that. So you can change it to the wireframe that you created there, which is a lot nicer to look at. You can also view it as a transformation grid and you can also change um, any of these shape graphs so if we want to go on the wireframe we want to maybe change the target shape to a different color and then the starting shape to a different color and then maybe get rid of the landmark numbers so then when i change it back to wireframe here we'll have all that now so it really depends on how you want to do it. You can also change it so it's not on the first principal component, but normally you would because it does explain most of the variance. Um, also, just to show what this actually shows, if I just go back to the lollipop graph, the um, dot shows the mean shape, and then the line shows basically the shape variation. So if you want to go into more sort of detailed analysis, I'm going to open another one which has a bit more data. So I'll just save this. So I'm going to open this data set here, which is a much larger data set. So if I just show you the graphs, this is actually a bat mandible. Um, but it works entirely the same as the fish body shape. And just because it's has such a large data set, I feel it's a better one to show. So if you remember the PC um, diagram from before, principal component one and two. So if you have set groups and the classifiers that you created, you can then go on here, confidence ellipsis, draw ellipsis, and then you can use any of those classifiers um, to group them and to draw an ellipsis on. So say I want to group by species, and then I'll use this to decide on the colours. And now you can see each uh, species or uh, genus here is coloured differently, which is great. So then we go to comparison, canonical variant analysis. There, we give it a name and then we pick what data set we want it to be on. So the whole bat one, we pick what we want to do on the process coordinates and then how we're going to want to compare the groups. So by species, permutation test, pairwise distances, so we can get a p-value and then execute. So you get your CV scores there. And then if we go on results, we've got all our results here. So here you've got your groups and your observations. Um, then you've got the variation among groups, so how much variance there is, and then it's importantly you've got your p-values here, so you can see uh, whether the groups significantly vary. If we go back to the graphics, um, 
So if you go on the um, shape changes, that shows the shape change associated with the axes of the canonical variant, um, which is the number of axes is the number of species minus one. You've also got the CV scores, which is just the scan part of the CV scores. We can also do, because this data has longitude and latitude, you could do a regression. So if I go regression, then you can pick your dependent and independent variables. So say for our dependent, we have all the bats and we have the clusters coordinates, you just select that like that. And then you can use your covariate latitude on permutation test, you could do a pool regression of species, execute. So then when we go on our results, you can see the p-value is less than 0 0.05, so it is significant. And doing this, you can see any sort of association between any of your covariates. So if you go on here, you can see it did say there was an association. You can see that there is a slight association between it. You can also, again, use your confidence ellipses here based on species. Oh, sorry, make sure it's color them. And you can see it's the way it goes up. And then I'll show you how to export your data set. So you just select the data set that you want to export or data set. Um, and you can pick what you want. So normally you would want your principal components. So I'm just going to export that. There we go. You can also select any of the classifiers you want to export. And then just save it as what you want. 